here. Welcome to another teletherapy tips video. I'm Brooke from Simply Speaking SLT. I'm a speech language pathologist and I specialize in teletherapy, specifically in the areas of digital materials, tools and games that we can use in teletherapy. Today's video is about Google Chrome extensions. Many of us love Google Chrome. If you don't have it on your computer, I highly recommend installing it and using it as your browser. And one of the things that is really helpful are extensions. Now, there are a bunch of videos out there about different game-based extensions. Um, today I'm gonna talk more about tools. These tools help me either during the session or when preparing or writing notes afterwards. So let me uh, turn on my camera to film my screen and I'll show you what I've got for you today. Okay, so here we are in Chrome and as you can see up here on the right hand side, these are some of the extensions. This is where they kind of end up when you install them and if you hit this little puzzle piece here, it might look different on your computer, but it shows you all your extensions and if that's one you want to use and have up there, you can just hit this pin button and it'll pin it up here. So let's take a look at some of the different ones I use. Okay, so ad blocker, 100% recommend. It is amazing. It blocks out ads that are either pop-ups or going to show up on the sides of websites. Now, quite often you might be wanting to use some digital games or some type of online game or some type of website with a student. And this just gives you an extra layer of protection in being able to control what the student sees. So ad blocker is just up here. now. So it, once you install it, it shows up up here. Now, something to consider. Sometimes if you are using a website and it naturally would have a pop-up, so let's pretend outside of the session you were doing some online shopping, um, and then it might block the pop-up of the payment window, what will happen is you'll see up here a little number next to it, it says how many things it's blocked. So if for some reason, it doesn't happen often, but if for some reason you're trying to have something happen, and then it will say, um, you know, it doesn't come up, you don't get the pop-up you want, you can just click on here and you can just go pause on all sites, pause on this site. Um, you can do um, just pause it if you want and then you just click up there to turn it back on. So that's one thing to note. But I highly recommend this. It looks, it just makes such a difference. Let's take a look at a website with it on and with it off. Okay, so I use ABC as a um, example here. Um, and you may choose to turn it off. So see this comes up, please turn off your ad blocker. It does talk about how they rely on ads to um, run their site. It can tell you using an ad blocker. So it, it's up to you how you wanna deal with this. I just um, am going to hit close, leave it on for now to show you the difference. Okay, so I'm going to go to a game I like, make a pizza. This is okay, so see how there are gray bars here that's where the ads normally would be so obviously abc yeah, is going to show appropriate ads you know it doesn't really matter so much here they're not popping up they're not getting in the way but if you can imagine if there was a bunch of ads popping up on another website this would stop them as well so see how it says a three here i can click it and it shows me that there's three on this site now let's pause it on this site and refresh the page the ads okay obviously you can tell I live in Auckland <laughs> but um yeah so the ads here not so bad on ABC but on some websites they can be really annoying so I just like to use ad blocker all the time resume blocking ads um, and then I don't need to worry so that is just an example so they're gonna stay gray now now let's look at the next one that I want to show you. Okay, print what you like. So this is really good for if you want to um, maybe clip something from a website and then use it to annotate. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm on a blog called My Kids Lick the Bowl and it has kid-friendly um, recipes and things like that, which is awesome. And so I'm just gonna show you how this extension works. So it's up here, the print what you like extension. I'll just show you again what it looks like. So let's go back to that blog. Okay, so this is carrot muffins. So it, as you can see, it's got a picture here and then it's got all the ingredients, which is cool. And then the instructions and then some pictures. So 
I might like to use this kind of just to talk about sequencing. We could describe, we could look at. Some of my kids are really into baking and stuff. Um, sometimes I'll show them the picture of the ingredients without having the word carrot muffins in there and see if they can guess what they think we'll make. Or we look at this one and we infer what might be in them, what we might be making, those kind of things. Um, we might sequence the pictures. But first, let's go ahead and I'll show you how this works. So I'm gonna go print what you like. Okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to come up with all these red boxes. So I'm gonna keep carrot muffins. I'm gonna click, so see as I click on stuff, it's going to, to highlight it yellow. I'll, I'll keep the steps. And I'm gonna keep this graphic. I don't need any of this. Don't need this. Yep. Or you might choose to have this this kind of stuff here but I just want those there so now what we can do is go back up to the last thing that I made yellow and I can go isolate and what it's going to do see it's just left me with the things from this blog post so this is great for blog posts I mean I use it a lot for myself <laughs> for like recipes and stuff but it's also just good for if you're on a website and you want to grab a copy of a bunch of stuff for a parent to send home without all the other stuff that's around the outside, if there's ads or things like that, or you want to print just a portion of a website. But now what you can do is go save as PDF. You don't have to, you don't have to print it. Um, and now it's going to generate a PDF. And here we go, it's going to open for me. And so I'll just close this. And here is our PDF. For some reason, this has gone all funny. Okay, this does not normally happen. No, and we've lost all our graphics. So let's try a different. You're gonna watch me uh, troubleshoot on the fly here. Let's try something different. Let's go print, and then save as PDF. So we're doing like a print to PDF thing now. Let's try that. And I'll just save it in my downloads. And then we'll open that up. So go to my downloads. Here we are. Okay, so now I'm, I like to, with Adobe, do fit one full page. Okay, so here we go. We've got our carrot muffin picture here, our image that we could, so if we go put on our comment bar, you know, we could write on here if we'd like or do something we'd like. Um, you could, um, talk about what you might talk about the sequence here um, of the different things that need to be done um, and yeah so there we go that's how I use print what you like I use it a lot in my own life just for normal life but it's really it can be really helpful for teletherapy All right next one Ed puzzle okay so this is an extension which means that the video that you are on um, can quickly be brought into Edpuzzle. I'm not gonna talk about Edpuzzle here today. That's another video, but Edpuzzle is amazing. It helps you turn any YouTube video um, into a little like quiz or activity. So because I've got this extension added to my Chrome, when we go to YouTube, oh, look at that. It's my intro to teletherapy webinar. I have free webinars and a whole playlist of um, teletherapy tips if you'd like to check it out. But this is just an example. See how here it says, edit with Edpuzzle. So there is an option here. And if I click it, it will take me straight to my Edpuzzle and I will be able to make a quiz, but I'm going to get out of that for now because that is not what we're looking at today. So it just adds a button so that you can find a video you like and hit edit with Edpuzzle. Um, and check out Edpuzzle, if, especially if you use Google Classroom, it is amazing. All right, this one is fun, so fun. So it's not, the irony is the custom cursors for Chrome don't work in the Chrome web store, so you can't see. Do you, but I'm not sure if you've noticed, let's go here. Can you see my pretty cursor? It's kind of hollow and rainbow and a bit bigger and easier for you to see than when I'm actually in the store. <laughs> um, it goes back to a, the normal boring cursor. But how this works is, is you can choose a bunch of different cursors. So obviously I'm using this rainbow one here, um, but it turns your mouse into a bunch of fun things. Like if we do Lego and a Lego man, so you could do it to suit your students' interests. You can go here and choose the size. Um, so we got a nice big one. The one thing that can be difficult is which part is the pointer. So it's easy for the Lego because there's a little arrow, but 
once it's the man, so it turns to a man when you're on a pushable button, it's right at the top of his head. So let's leave it on here for now because I want to show you how this could work. So if we go to, oh, so I also just want to show you actually, see there's all these different curses you, that you have available and then you can upload more. Sorry about that. Okay. You can upload more. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go to this coloring game. This is my website, simplydigitalslp.com. If you want more information about this subscription website, you can find information below. And it is a materials library of hundreds of digital materials that you can use for teletherapy or on your iPad in person. So we're just going to click the coloring book game. So many of our materials are digital downloads that you can download, but some of them are online games like this one here. So let's go to this free to play one. This is available for people even if they don't sign up. So mind the lag guys, I have a lot of stuff opening at the moment. Okay, so we've got uh, the L sound game here, which is for as an L sound coloring book. I'm going to do the laundry. Okay, so now let's change our cursor to um, a pencil. And there we go. All right, so this is fun. Now I could choose my color and choose pink and I can write and I can change the size if I want. So yeah, it's just fun. There's lots of different ways you can change your cursor. Um, and yeah, if you want to find out more about Simply Digital SLP as a subscription site for speech therapists, you can find out more below. All right, the next one I want to show you is Change Case. Now this one is very good for if you are wanting to quickly fix up some case issues. So let's pretend you had caps lock on or a student had caps lock on and they didn't realize and they typed something out in all caps. Let's bring up something to have a look. Okay, so I've changed my cursor again. <laughs> I am in Book Creator here. Book Creator is awesome and you should totally check it out, but that's another video as well. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if you want a video for Book Creator. Okay, so um, I'm going to write and I've got my caps lock on without realizing it. Go away, said the boy. Right, and then it's like, oh no, I've got caps lock on. Well, you just select everything. You could either triple click or control A to select everything or highlight it. And then I'm just gonna go Alt 2 and it's going to go back to small. And then same if I wanna go the other way, Alt 1 makes it go all capitals. So, and then I can go Alt 3 and it makes it sentence caps. Let's see if Alt 4 does anything. Well, not sentence caps, sorry. Um, everything is capitalized. And then what about Alt 4? Alt 4 is sentence caps. So that is a really good way just to fix things up quickly. If you've noticed that, again, I use this a lot in report writing, writing my notes, um, a whole lot of things. It only works in Chrome, obviously, but um, it's, it's, it is very handy to have. Okay, so that was change case. Um, I've got one more to look at with you and it's Bitmoji. So Bitmoji, if you don't know what it is, it's where you can make a person that looks like you. You've probably seen them come up everywhere because teachers are loving them right now and speech therapists can love them too. And I have a feeling I'm signed out on my Bitmo Bitmoji so I can't even show you mine. But um, it is a cool extension which means once you've made your Bitmoji, it means you can use your Bitmoji in Google, which means you could like add it, add it to Google Slides. You could put it into a book creator book. Um, it brings up all the different text boxes. You could do like digital stickers with it. It's really fun. So do check out Bitmoji. I hope you found that helpful. And if you'd like to learn more about teletherapy and learn some more of my tips, go and check out the playlist, which I'll put here somewhere on teletherapy tips. And if you'd like to learn more about um, the materials that I create and sell, there'll be links down in the description box. Also, if you ever have any questions, you can contact me on social media. My social media links are also down in the description box. Have a great day, guys. And remember, reduce the prep time and increase the fun.